my dogs, it's Simon here. Welcome back to the Hermit's Cave. It's Saturday. Hope everybody's having a lovely weekend so far. I will be on later to do a couple of ketchup and cards. It's one of those rare Saturdays where I've got some time today. I've been out this morning, been for a walk, had a coffee, been to the barbers. And then I went to track down this. <laughs> Now, most things that are sent to me are sent to my work address. Um, and I can't remember if I updated um, Mikola's information for me from the Ukraine. Uh, but he sends decks every so often. He's got a company called Pentagram Publishing. Um, and some lovely decks have come from Pentagram Publishing. Um, and while Sandra was here last weekend, I missed a delivery on this and then I rescheduled it to be delivered to the post office which is just downstairs because I knew I wouldn't be in in the week um, and I never got notification that that had happened so I went down yesterday and to the post office given the tracking number and they didn't have it I was like no it must have gone back um, and then they said oh you can try the sorting office which is the big you know Royal Mail sorting office which I did and they had it it took a while to find but it was there so that's that's been my morning so far but other than that I'm just gonna have a bit of a chilled out day today I've got a trip out tomorrow which I may I may vlog actually I'm not sure how long it would be but um yeah so I thought we'll take a look at this now this deck is the third deck from the creator who first gave us a uh, Bloody Tears Tarot. Now this is done with pen um, and I, I really, really like this deck. I have just sat <laughs> for the longest time, A, finding the decks from all my shelf, we've had 800 plus decks, and then B, putting them all into order. I'm not gonna show them all, but you know, I, I have this thing where I open a deck of cards and if they're all over the place, so it starts with, I don't know, the Six of Pentacles. I'm like, hmm. Um, so this one, which was Bloody Tears Tarot, was using kind of reds, purples and blacks, really. Uh, but the detailing and the, um, of the ink, the line work, is fantastic. Absolutely gorgeous. Really loved it. And then and Mikola said to me that he was um, working with the artist to produce a second deck, which came about, I think, about nine months ago. And that's the Fantasy Garden Tarot. Lots of people have um, left comments on this video. Um, they, they really seem to, to enjoy this particular deck. And yeah, really seem to uh, like it. And this one in particular is using a full full colour range. It's still that um, that ink, very detailed line work. I mean, just look how beautiful um, these images are. Absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, I've had people comment saying, how are you getting on um, with the Fantasy Garden? Um, and it's just gorgeous. It's not one I use as much as I should really because um it i mean look at that for a hermit card i mean stunning so that came and then Mikola contacted me um gosh a couple of weeks ago to say the third deck was um now available from the same artist and could he send it and i didn't hesitate because i loved bloody tears i loved the fancy garden now this is quite a contemporary deck and it's based on new york and it's based on the time of the millennium so late 90s early noughties um so just as a bit of a warning obviously if um well who wouldn't know about things that happened in new york at the turn of the century obviously i'm talking about 9 11 so um there are uh, certainly the t uh, the tower card that will refer to that so if that's something you don't want to see then um i just want to put that out first i know there's quite a few decks 
um, that have been created that have, um, I'm thinking of something like New Era Elements, um, the first edition of the Bright, um, I forgot what it's called now, um, but anyway, you know, there's been a few tarot decks that um, show the Twin Towers for the Tower card, but this one is um, a City Labyrinth Tarot. And you can see it's got the same uh, kind of lovely cold stamping on the box. It looks like it's the same packaging. Um, and yeah, it's by by the same same creator. Um, if you see here, Pentagram Publishing, made in Ukraine. I'm just trying to see if the uh, artist name uh, is mentioned on the packaging. I hope it is. Um, it just says 78 uh cards and guidebook 2024 um let's have a look yes it's there so uh dimitro Ryshak, i think is how you pronounce it dimitro Ryshak or Ryshak, and then printed by pentagram publishing um and I think one of the decks was signed. Yeah, this deck was actually signed by um, the creator here, the artist, Dimitro. Um, I'm not sure about the first one. Yeah, the first one was signed as well. Uh, this one isn't signed, but that's that's absolutely fine. Um, so let's have a, let's open it up and we'll read the back. So the City Labyrinth Tarot deck is about life in New York in the early 2000s. The phones, computers and cards that the characters use are typical of the time and already seem outdated. It's hard to believe that the 2000s is 20 odd years ago. Uh, in addition, some, arca some arcana contain direct references to the millennium. Thus the heroine of the high priestess resembles the oracle from the film, The Matrix. And the card, the tower, depicts a tragic terrorist attack on the Twin Towers. Um, yes, as mentioned. Um, so you can see here we've got this beautiful uh, metallic red on the front that says City Labyrinth uh, Tarot. Um, and then it's kind of like raised up. So it's like a gloss on matte on the sides. So nice, nice sturdy box. Oops. So we do get a little guidebook, quite like that. That's nice design. I love this art style. I really do. There's something really nice about it. It reminds me of some animation, um, like Raymond Briggs type animation, like when the wind blows, that sort of uh, thing, that, which was the, the 80s. And then, yeah, it's just a little, uh, little guidebook here. Tells you a little bit about the deck. Um, and then we get the, the meanings. We've got these graffiti type backs. Uh, in terms, it feels a little bit smaller. Yeah, a little bit smaller than um, a standard tarot. Um, probably, probably better to show it that way where it stands out a little bit more. So it's narrower and shorter than a US Games NPC card. This is probably more your Llewellyn um, or Los Carabeo type cardstock. But as you can see, we've got this, this wall, this brick wall with graffiti art on it, which is very in keeping for a tarot deck about a city. Pentagram Publishing, we create tarot and oracles. I'll put a link to them in the description below. Um, if you have got a QR code, you might want to QR that now, which will take you to their, uh, their website. So you'd, all you have to do, if you are new to QR codes, not many people uh, wouldn't be now, um, is just point your camera at the QR and it takes you there. Okay, we've got an, another additional card. Yes, we've got a double-sided card. Um, and we have that one at the back. So that's kind of like, um, yeah, making sure the, the deck is protected. All right, let's bring the camera down then and have a look. What I will say is there is a glossy cardstock rather than the matte cardstock, but that is in keeping with Bloody Tears and Fantasy Garden as well. 
Wow, these images look quite uh, quite powerful. Okay, so hopefully that's um, clear enough. Um, what I will say is obviously this is a Ukrainian company where English isn't their first language. So the little white book is, um, you know, it's it's in Ukrainian and, and English, but um, you don't get like a description of the cards. It is just telling you the upright meaning. So it's quite a generic, um, but it's still nice, I think, to get a little white book. And that's what you get with most publishers anyway. Um, so, so yeah, I would think unless, unless we, something is obvious in the image. So they mentioned the high priestess, or was it the empress being uh, based on the oracle from the matrix, etc. So you'll probably recognize um, some of the images anyway. Um, and this is my vision board. <laughs> this is my, what I'm trying to manifest. I really want to go to New York this year. I'm, I've been talking to my good friend Jen over the last couple of days as to a suitable time to go. Uh, but I need to bring it, I need to manifest it. I want to go and spend some time with Jen and also dear daughter, our L. So um, yeah, I'm desperate to get over there. So having a New York based deck, um, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to working. I might even take it with me when I go, that would be fun. I was gonna take, I can take two. <laughs> I was going to take the Urban Tarot, which is also based around uh, New York. So here's our fall. Um, little dog look, like we see with our fall. Um, I think this is the the danger that potentially poses here is that we've got the red hand to say, you know, don't walk. Um, this car's coming, the dog is trying to give um, attention to um, its owner. These people are looking on, there's cars coming down the road. So uh, I think this is called jaywalking in, in the US. Love our magician. This was one of the cards that I saw uh, when I was looking into this deck. Um, I love it. I just love the the perspective here. I love the light shining through and, you know, um, the shadows of the, the kind of bars on the window. Um, just sitting there. And do you notice he's got, I've only just noticed that, the Magician card on his arm. That's pretty cool, isn't it? That is cool. It looks like there's some musical instruments and things underneath the steps. There's lots of, there's lots of detail in these, uh, in these cards. Now, was it this card? Yes, it would be, because the Empress is in. So this is, uh based on the oracle from from matrix that's what it said wasn't it yeah the high priestess resembles the oracle from the film the matrix but it's beautiful what a beautiful scene again we've got uh we've got kind of a family here mother with two daughters as the empress sitting outside a coffee bar um, that's what I want to do. I want to go to uh, a cafe in New York and sit outside, supping coffee, coffee. <laughs> the Emperor. There's a Johnny Depp look about him. Cardstock is really quite nice as well. This, uh, it's not too thick, but it's got a nice Nice flex to it. Here's our Hierophant. Isn't that great? Somebody of the older generation imparting their thoughts and knowledge, perhaps what's going on in the world with the younger generation. Our lovers. There's so much to see in the background. The chariot. Wow, look at the uh, the horse emblems. Strength is beautiful, isn't it? 
gorgeous. The Hermit. That's a poignant image. Somebody that's on the fringes. Got this fire here to keep warm, but look at the apartments behind with the lights on and wow. And we have our Wheel of Fortune, this bookshop. Look at the above the door. This is really clever. I like this deck already. Justice for somebody in cuffs. The Hanged Man. Now I'm hoping that this is somebody that does that, that uh, free running, I think it's called. It certainly looks like that, where they jump from one building to another. It does make me feel a bit queasy and they're doing this kind of acrobat in the air. I'm hoping that that's what that is. And this is what I'm going to take it as being, uh, rather than somebody falling from a great height between these two buildings. But yeah, for me, it looks like that sort of uh, urban running, free running, whatever it's called. We have the death card here. But um, it looks like a, it's a bird of some sort. I don't know if it's a dove. Um, and, you know, he's obviously very troubled by that. We have temperance. I love to see these. It always blows my mind. I'm like, how on earth? How on earth do they do that? And I know it's all about weights and, you know, kind of optical illusions, but yeah, there used to be one in Nottingham that was a Yoda and Yoda used to be holding onto a cane and the cane would, uh, you know, obviously um, be the what's, what's supporting uh, the artist. He's balancing in a cup here, look in this goblet. The devil, look at this. So this is some sort of um, art, street art. They're just, you know, conversing in front of it. I love this. So as mentioned, we, we do have so on the perspective of a firefighter here in the foreground. The star. We have this six pointed star up here above this bar sign. Star bar. I wonder if there is a star bar in New York. The moon. And the sun. Then we have the judgment card. Again, we've, we're seeing the uh, the homeless here. I love this break in the clouds with these light shards coming coming down. And then we have the world. It looks like some sort of march um, or parade and all the nations represented here. I've got the Union Jack, Canadian flag, Japanese flag. Of course, we've got Ukraine front and, and center, as you'd expect. Um, and then we go into our miners. 
So we've got our Ace of Wands, we're starting with the Wands. <laughs> Buying a new bag. Three of Wands, it's interesting that they're looking at their, their kind of journey forward, planning their project how they get to the finishing point. Ah, oh, that's nice. They're right in the middle of a <laughs> in the central reservation though, but that's a nice image. Five of Wands. What on earth? That's someone's head? Looks like he's trying to pull something over his head. Not quite sure what this is. Is it a courtroom setting? See, I would love a guidebook to tell you know to describe what's happening in, in the images. Six of Wands. <laughs> Victory there. Seven of Wands. Got somebody with a C and D. Flag. Wow, look at that. The Eight of Wands. Stuck two together there. Nine of Wands. Somebody having a jog through Central Park. I'm assuming. The Ten of Wands. Lots of, looks like scrolls of plans. That's an architect. We have our page. Knight. Queen. And our King. I mean, these kind of, um, not so much there, was it the page? They kind of look like from a, an earlier time. I know this is of 24 years ago. Um, but, you know, and I wasn't, actually, the only time I've been to New York and it was only Newark Airport was 2000, yeah, 2000. Um, around this time, I know the Twin Towers are still up because we saw it from the airport window and the Statue of Liberty, ray in the distance. I took a, a picture of it, it didn't come out very well. Um, but I don't remember people being dressed like that. Two of Swords, got a laptop doing some studying. Have a look at this the Three of Swords. Again, it's looking at um, the more traditional images that are appearing throughout the deck in, in different guises, like, you know, artwork or graffiti or patches on arms and things like that. The Four of Swords. Five, Golden Gate. Lots of people sporting the punk kind of. Didn't realise that was had a kind of a revival in New York around that time. There's the Brooklyn Bridge. I almost said the Golden Gate Bridge. We've seen Golden Gate there. Of course, Golden Gate Bridge is in San Francisco, isn't it? Um, so the Brooklyn Bridge. Brooklyn Bridge? That's the name of the suspension bridge, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Seven of Swords. I'm, I'm really enjoying this deck. I have to say, really enjoying this deck. It's one that I need to um, really sit with as well. 
and digest these, these images. They're not all easy, but you know, there's lots of talk about having a deck that represents uh, life in, in modern Britain, US, wherever. Um, and this certainly, certainly addresses that. Sword behind there. Okay, so we have our cups. <laughs> That's sweet. It looks like these might be, uh, yeah, theme. Obviously, with it being cups, it's themed around sort of coffee shops and nightlife. the bar <laughs> blowing gum blowing bubbles dream on <laughs> Interesting take on the Eight of Cups. And Ten of Cups, we have that family scene. It's like they're having a day out in the park. It's Captain Bird's Eye. <laughs> and then we have our final suit, which is the Pentacles. I'm interested to see how they're going depi to depict the five of Pentacles. I like this for the two, the balance, the juggling. As depicted here as a street entertainer. The perfect choice for the two of Pentacles, right? Again, with the three having their work kind of assessed. Four. Okay, so here's our five. We do have that formation like we see in the window of the RWS. So it's people, um, again, looking like the, the homeless, um, asking for donations be interesting to see what's, what the building behind might be. It's like we've got the Ninja Turtles. Could be an old cinema or something, perhaps. This is well thought out. I'm really impressed. The artwork is is incredible. This artist is an incredible artist uh, for pen, pen and ink. Oh, nine of pentacles. In the town, on a roof terrace, in the city. No dog. Our night. Beautiful Queen of Pentacles. And the King. There you have it. Wow, yeah, I'm really impressed. I love this artist's work anyway. Um, City Labyrinth. Um, the one before was Fantasy Garden and then uh, Bloody Tears. So this is the set of, of three. Um, 
yeah, I I like it. Let me know your thoughts. Um, I knew I knew it would be in this style, obviously. Um, like I said, I think I need to spend some time with each of the cards because from a walkthrough video like this, I can only really give you my first impressions. Um, but it's one that I want to kind of dive deep into and kind of get my own interpretations because, as I said, the book is a generic uh, guidebook um, that you could apply with any any deck. I'd love to know a little bit more about uh, about the images. And maybe if you're watching this and you're you know, a native New York person, um, you might be able to offer some more insights too. So please do feel free to comment uh, below. But thanks for watching, everyone. Oh, my light, my ring light has just gone off. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why. But uh, yeah, until next time, which hopefully will be at seven o'clock tonight, for a couple of catch up in cards. Go in peace. Namaste. And blessed be. Mm -hmm.